Hey, welcome back everyone. I apologize, I know it's uh, been quite a while here, but uh, I just recently got my new workshop set up. And yes, I now live uh, full time in an RV, uh, traveling the country. So I hope to prove that you can still do big projects in a small space. Uh, as you saw, uh, we're actually gonna start testing on the Streamliner version two. And to bring everyone up to speed, the goal of this project is to build the world's fastest 3D printed radio control car. Uh, I want to exploit the capabilities of 3D printing to hopefully create a uniquely engineered RC car, and I want to make it uh, relatively cheap. I think at this point I have a bit over $100 in the car as it stands, which is way less than most speedrunners have in a single battery pack. So when I left you last, I just completed testing of uh, the version 1 of the Streamliner, which successfully made it to over 90 miles per hour uh, with a cobbled together uh, front suspension. Um, I then took the lessons learned from version 1 and went ahead and incorporated those into version 2. And the front and rear suspension are virtually identical to uh, version 1, albeit the front is wider. And uh, I designed a progressive uh, TPU type tension spring uh, without a front shock absorber to save some space inside the body tube. Hoping to further improve the top speed, I went ahead and moved from a 3S to a 6S battery, so literally doubling my power. Uh, which is located even further forward inside the main body tube in hopes of further stabilizing the chassis. And I finally did my best to condense and mount all the electronics as low as possible in the chassis and actually uh, rigidly fix them to the chassis so that they don't uh, bounce around at all. If you saw my previous videos, uh, you know that I was driving on some very rough uh, textured concrete roads. Uh, which caused a lot of issues um, from tram lining to actually just having the entire car uh, roll over because of the surface roughness. Uh, now that my home is actually mobile, uh, I've been able to locate some uh, nice smooth asphalt surfaces for test runs. The maiden test of version 2 was honestly a complete failure. Um, as you can see in the clips, I can't even drive uh, the car 50 feet without rolling it over. Um, I went ahead and fought with it for about an hour, and then I just gave up uh, due to a rear tire failure. Um, after the test, I noticed that the uh, MPU 6050, or the inertial measurement unit that I'm using, uh, which is responsible for the car's stability control, was actually mounted in a different orientation from the version one uh, chassis. So the stability software was actually destabilizing the car rather than stabilizing it. Uh, so I went ahead and I fixed the code and then I found a location for test run number two. So I know there was something wrong with my stability uh, control logic in my software, but I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. Um, I did get a couple of decent runs approaching close to 40 mile an hour, uh, but they all ended in a crash. And I finally broke off the nose cone and the GPS unit came flying out. So that was the end of uh, test two. I felt like at this point, I'd been messing around with this uh, narrow uh, design approach uh, for the better part of a year with uh, mixed results. So I felt like I needed to go ahead and try to do a better job of actually quantifying my configuration changes. So I went ahead and set up a tilt table test uh, where the car is placed on a table uh, which tilts and uh, we can actually capture the angle when the car uh, begins to roll over. So I tried a number of different configurations um, with and without batteries uh, I tried adding additional weight actually to the bottom of the car below the roll center and even uh, a wider wheelbase, uh, both front and rear. And this table here kind of shows the results. 
Um, as you can see, oddly, with no battery, I'm able to tilt it uh, further. And with a 6S battery, I can only get it to about 26 degrees. Um, when I add more weight below the roll center, again, for some reason, the car rolls over sooner. And then when I actually increase the width of the rear wheel or the front track width, uh, I, of course, uh, dramatically increase the rollover angle. Now, for comparison purposes, a fully loaded uh, London double-decker bus must exceed a tilt angle of 28 degrees. And then something like a Formula One car uh, will typically exceed 60 degrees. So my mid-20 degree rollover uh, situation is pretty abysmal. Obviously, having a wider track in the front significantly increases the max tilt angle. Um, but adding weight to the bottom and moving the batteries lower doesn't actually help that much. And that comes down to really the location of the mass in the car. Because of the type of non-independent front and rear suspension that I have on the car, the roll center will be along an imaginary line between the wheel centers. Uh, roughly two-thirds of the car's weight is the battery pack, electronics, and motor. But as you can see, at least half the motor's weight, half the battery pack's weight, and part of the electronics weight are actually above the roll center. And because of the necessary ground clearance, I can't really lower the battery or the electronics anywhere in the chassis. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I have some options. I can try adding additional weight to the bottom of the chassis, but I think I would probably need something close to 300 grams um, in a very uh, thin sheet. Uh, this is something that real streamliners at Bonneville uh, will do to increase the stability of the streamliner. Unfortunately, this means you know I need a longer space to actually get the car up to speed, which is not ideal. Or I can do something crazy like add a reaction wheel to make the car self-balancing or I can just make the car wider by either creating a version 3, which is a completely new design, or actually utilizing the uh, rear wing that I don't currently have installed and actually have the end plates uh, act as training wheels, so to speak, for the car so that it can't uh, tip over as easily. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see which one's uh, going to help the most. I also think it's going to be important to address the bugs that I have in the uh, stability control. A lot of the issues I'm having with that right now is that I'm using a RC airplane uh, ESC. And unfortunately, the braking function it has is not the same as you would have in an RC car. Um, this is basically a fully proportional braking. So anytime I um, let off the throttle, it immediately brakes, which can lock up the rear tire and destabilize the whole thing. So I think I may actually turn off the braking function um, of the motor and see if I can get the traction control and the stability uh, back to where it was. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, is this design ultimately doomed or is there some other approach I should try? Well, thanks everyone for watching and uh, stay safe out there.